Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to discuss about benign epidermal tumors of eyelids. First, let us discuss about squamous cell papilloma. It is a very common benign epithelial tumor. The incidence of squamous cell papilloma increases with age, that is, it is more common in elderly people. HPV infection has been linked with some cases of squamous cell papilloma. HPV is human papilloma virus. Coming to histopathology, histopathology shows finger-like projections of fibrovascular connective tissue covered by irregular acanthotic and hyperkeratotic squamous epithelium as you can see in this picture. There is fibrovascular connective tissue which is covered by hyperkeratotic squamous epithelium. Coming to the clinical appearances, patients can present with narrow-based pedunculated or skin tag-like lesions as you can see in this picture. They can also present as pink broad-based or sessile lesions. They can present with whitish thread-like hyperkeratotic lesions which is known as filiform lesions which is similar to a cutaneous horn. Coming to the treatment of squamous cell papilloma, simple excision is the treatment of choice. Other treatment options include cryotherapy and laser or chemical ablation. Coming to seborrheic keratosis, it is also known as basal cell papilloma. It is a common slowly growing lesion found on face, trunk and extremities of elderly individuals. Coming to the histopathology of seborrheic keratosis, histopathology shows expansion of squamous epithelium of epidermis by proliferating basal cells sometimes with keratin filled horns or cystic inclusions as you can see in this picture. That is histopathology will show horn cysts like these and pseudo horn cysts. Coming to the clinical appearance, patients present with discrete light to dark brown plaque with a friable greasy verrucous surface and a stuck on appearance as you can see in this picture. Usually they are numerous lesions. Coming to the differential diagnosis, we need to differentiate seborrheic keratosis from pigmented basal cell carcinoma, nevus and melanoma. Coming to the treatment options for seborrheic keratosis, we must do shave biopsy. Occasionally, simple excision can be done. Other treatment options include electro desiccation with curatage, laser ablation, cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen and chemical peeling. Coming to the next lesion that is acne keratosis. It is also known as solar or silane keratosis. It is a common slowly growing lesion that rarely develops on eyelids. It is common in elderly fair skin individuals on areas of sun damaged skin like forehead and backs of hands. Coming to the histopathology, histopathology shows irregular dysplastic epidermis as you can see in this picture with hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis and cutaneous horn formation. Coming to the clinical appearance, the lesion is a hyperkeratotic plaque with distinct borders and a scaly surface that may become fissured as you can see in this picture. Occasionally, there can be nodular or wart like lesion which can lead to the formation of a cutaneous horn. Actinic keratosis has a very low potential for transformation into squamous cell carcinoma. However, it is important to remember that transformation into squamous cell carcinoma is a rare possibility in cases of actinic keratosis. Coming to the treatment of actinic keratosis, we have to subject the patient to biopsy followed by excision or cryotherapy. Thank you.